Welcome to another episode of The Clever Dev. In this one, we're going to take an autocomplete component from Material UI, and we're going to use some of the customizations. So we're going to use some Star Wars data from a free API, and we're going to set what the text looks like in our popper here, uh, what fields you can search on, and in this case, we'll use the name for the manufacturer. And we're going to do the styling that you can see here, where we have every other row uh, styled with a gray background. So we're starting with just the simple combo, uh, the simple auto suggest box. And um, I've already gone ahead and added use effect and fetch the data. I'll talk through that real fast, but um, I wanted to go ahead and get that URL typed out and so on. So many people are familiar with the swappy.dev, that's a Star Wars API, a lot of free Star Wars data. Um, so this one's an alternative to that because, well, simply swappy.dev wasn't working when I tried to, use, to create this. So anyway, I've just got a simple fetch here, and we are, after fetching the data, we're setting this, uh, this state variable of data uh, with the data that we fetched. So let's take a look at that data in a formatter. So what I'm going to use from it today is the name and the manufacturer. So this data comes direct from the Wikipedia, the um, fan-created database of stars information. So this, uh, for those who care, this information is canonical. So anyway, pretty, pretty interesting um, backstory on the manufacturer there. With that said, let's go ahead and actually focus on the code here. So what we care about is a couple different props on the autocomplete. So we care about one called render input, which the basic, uh, and this is a forked demo so far. What I'm starting out with is a forked demo from uh, the material UI box. They've already got a render input here, and ours will look pretty similar to that. Uh, we'll care about render option. And for now, I'll just comment it out. And we will care about the um, get option label which I'm going to actually put above the render option because the default value for render option is actually get option label. So once we get that get option label set in there, then we get a little more functionality. So we'll tackle that first. Uh, I'll also create a custom popper because I found that a custom popper was necessary to get that gray every other row styling that we saw. So let's go ahead and work on our get option label. So what get option label will do is it will actually give us the um, text by which we will do the searches. So depending on what we put in here, then uh, and we actually want to return something pretty simple here. We're just going to return. Let's see, we are returning option dot name and option dot manufacturer. So what we've got here helps if we close our close our uh, prop here. So what this does is now we can search on both the name. So let's try CR90. So we've got the CR90, or we can search on let's try the manufacturer KUAT. So all the ones that are Kuwait drive yards are being returned for Kuwait Systems Engineering. So let's see what happens if I simply take the manufacturer off. And as you can see, uh, the render option is actually just rendering whatever we have for get option label. I mentioned that the render option uses get option label as the default. The render option, once we set that up, it will render whatever we, it'll put whatever text we tell it to in here. Um, but for now, it's defaulting to that get option label. So, but let's try the manufacturer here. It was 2.8. So that no longer uh, is, is returning any, any data because we took the manufacturer out. So there we go. Get option label, pretty straightforward on what that does there. Let me wipe out the get option label that it started out with. So let's bump down then to render option. And our render option, 
let's see. Let's see what we care about here. Um, what we can do with the render option is we can actually specify what component is going to be returned in the popper. So the popper is constructed of an unordered list of list items, and then within that, whatever we tell, uh, whatever we specify in the render input, the render option is what gets put in there. So I'm going to say, let's add some H4s in there. So within that, we need to specify what text we care about. So we will care about the uh, we'll care about the option name and option manufacturer again. But I'll just start with option name, <coughs> and now we can see that it's picking up this H4 because see we've got that default styling of an H4, and we can see that it's only rendering the name. Interestingly, though, we can still search on the manufacturer because that's specified here in the get option label that we can search on manufacturer. Of course, it doesn't really make sense to only have option name <clears throat> when you can search on name and manufacturer. So let me go ahead and add back uh, and add option dot manufacturer here too. I just wanted to make it nice and clear uh, how that was all working. So let's take a look, make sure everything's good. Great. So we're seeing what we expect there. And let's add in uh, just some formatting in our text there, that colon. So one thing that'd be nice is if up here, it had a default value of what the search text should look like. You know, we have some hint for the user that they need to search on name or manufacturer or both. So let's actually take our um, render input and let's update it a little bit. So it's still got combo boxes, the, the label text. Uh, because, like I said, I, for I forked this from the material UI docs. So let's go ahead and say name colon manufacturer. There we go. So now they've got that nice little hint. So pretty cool there. So we've got a lot of what I wanted to accomplish done already. However, what we're missing is the styling on these uh, you know, on this unordered list within our popper component. So typically with Material UI, you can uh, target root and then some class within root to set stylings. However, in the DOM, and it's hard to get the DOM to show for the popper, but in the DOM, then the popper is actually separate from the parent component of the autocomplete uh, of the autocomplete here. So what that means is that if we want to target the popper, then we need to actually create a custom popper com component, and that's simply uh, just another prop of popper component, and it'll be whatever we specify. So I'm going to create something called custom popper. I'm going to comment that out for a minute because we haven't created it yet, and then let's actually go up here and create our custom popper. So uh, let's start with the custom popper, and then we'll add some stylings onto it. So our custom popper, I'm just going to keep it pretty simple. And let's say, uh, let's see if there's any props passed in. Um, always good to add that just in case. And let's return uh, just a simple material material UI popper out of the box. And let's see, anything else? We should, of course, let it have any props that are passed in. Uh, we'll add a class name in a little bit. And let's go ahead and specify the placement of bottom, just to make sure that that's controlled and we don't get any surprises. So it's probably going to be unhappy that our popper is not being imported yet. Let's go ahead and import that. Import popper from, and that's in material UI core. And just popper. Some things are in lab, uh, like the autocomplete is actually in material UI lab. That just means it's a newer, maybe um, more research oriented component. So we've got our custom popper here. Let's go ahead and uncomment this. And shouldn't really be anything interesting or anything different yet because all we've got is a popper in there, uh, just like the default component. So let's get our styling set up for it. Let's say make styles 
and create styles. We're going to import these once again from Material UI Core and import them from styles. So then what we can do, let's go ahead and create our use styles hook. So I don't have anything special with the theme that I'm bringing in, but we'll go ahead and include it here. And I'm coding in code sandbox here because I wanted to be able to fork this demo. And uh, sometimes code sandbox is a little too helpful. Anyway, so like I mentioned before, we'll target root. And I don't actually care about anything in root. What I care about is um, within the popper, I want to target the MUI autocomplete dash list box class. So there is a list box component in the DOM. Um, there's a list box component in the DOM and that list box component uh, within it are is an unordered list and a bunch of LIs, list items that we care about targeting. And you'll notice that I'm getting a fail to fetch. Sometimes this swappy data, uh, this swappy dash deno data returns and sometimes it doesn't. Um, but I've got backup data that I'll plug in here in a moment. Let me get this finished and we'll plug that in. Let's add some basic stuff. We'll add a border, uh, just 2px. Um, I'm not going to be super interested in what it looks like. I more want to show what's possible. So we'll style the border gray and better put my comma there or else it'll be unhappy. Let's do font size. Uh, make it something pretty big just to show it's, it's sticking. So here's the tricky thing. If you want to target, uh, if you want to use the int child uh, CSS property, then it was actually pretty tricky to figure out Let's see, I've got, I want to target the li, and then I want int child, and I'm going to target even and odd separately. And I'll talk about this more in just a minute. Let me get this coded. Background color, and let's just set it to, um, we'll set the even ones to gray and the odd ones to white. So I'm going to copy this. All we care about is odd here. We'll set that to white, the FFF. So let's talk about the syntax for a minute. First, within root, notice we've got this uh, JSS syntax. So we've got this ampersand and then a space. What that's saying is that this root style, it'll be on the popper and um, it'll be at the top level of the popper. In fact, let's go ahead and add that in. So on popper, we've got class name. Let's just add it right after props here. So we've got that root class on the top level of the popper. And then within the root, there's in the DOM a child, uh, a child element that will have this MUI autocomplete list box on it, uh, class on it. And then what we're saying, so that will get this border and font size. Within that, um, there are list items that we want to target. So this is targeting the li elements, and this is uh, selecting only the even childs, uh, only the even children, only the odd children. So um, getting the spacing is right is important. A space means it's a child. If there was no space, I'd be saying um, it's a sibling or um, at that level. So anyway, definitely make sure that you get the styling correct on that. And I'm gonna um, pop over here to my sandbox where I've got the. Um, where I've got some data stashed away because sometimes that API gives me data and sometimes it doesn't. So let's pull up that uh, extra data I've got. So there's a lot of these small sites that maybe I've copied this data and uh, sometimes it can just be a little bit hard to get them to um, be reliable. You know what, I'll actually just pull it in from over there instead of worrying about another code sandbox. So I'll call that alt data, and we'll go ahead and, uh, I'm not sure how many rows I pulled in here, but we'll see. So we've got that alt data, 
So I'm just going to take this up here, comment out my fetch code. This fetch is valid, valid code. Um, it's really that that API is just unreliable, and this has happened to me before with it, which is why I was um, ready to go and get that alt data. So now you can see we have quite a few less rows. Um, if I wanted to steal a few more, I want to get the Y wing in here. Let's go ahead. Oh, we got to get the X wing, of course. So I'm going to take some of those and TIE Fighter 2. Uh, you know, got to stop somewhere. So I'm going to pull in this extra data. Let's add it at the bottom. Now we should have even more rows in there. There we go. Now we've got the Y wing and the X wing also. So a little bit more data, just make this more robust. So um, anyway, let's see what we've got now. We've got a custom component uh, with our popper, and we're able to apply this styling that we care about. So you can see it's a little hard to tell, but the font size is a little bit bigger. And there's actually this uh, gray border all around it. Let's make it, let's say, 8px, just so that we can see it more easily. Yeah, there we go. Not pretty, but um, just for a demo, shows you what's possible. And then, of course, we've got that custom uh, every other row being a gray background. So pretty cool stuff. So that's really all there is to this particular example of custom styling uh, and autocomplete component. So I hope that you enjoyed this demo. Please consider subscribing to my channel. More subscribers really motivates me. And I appreciate uh, your, your time. And I really hope that this helps you in whatever you're trying to build. And really love the Material UI library. Definitely check out the docs for the autocomplete component because it is a really robust component. They really put in some time to make a lot of really cool customizations in it. All right, appreciate it. Bye.